let's go to the Lord in prayer. I invite you to come to the altar tonight as we pray. Ask the Lord to prepare our hearts for what he has for us. Father, we come to you tonight, and we are thankful for this day and for another opportunity to be together tonight. And Lord, we just ask that you would uh, you would meet with us. Uh, God, speak to our hearts. Let us uh, let's, let us leave from here tonight. Change people. Uh, God, you do your work in us, and we're going to thank you and praise you for all that you do. We thank you for our Savior tonight. And I pray, God, that everything that is said and done would be pleasing to Him and exalt Him and lift Him up. We're so thankful for Jesus and the way that He loves us and cares for us, and we just give you praise tonight. Uh, for our Savior, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We ask for the Holy Spirit to move in our midst here tonight. And uh, God, just uh, finger around our hearts. And, and Lord, you just uh, you do your work in us, and we'll thank you for that. Uh, God, as we pray tonight, we, uh, we want to intercede in prayer for those that are suffering. God, there's so many tonight that stand in need of prayer and a, a touch from you and, and uh, healing and strength and guidance and grace. And so, Father... We just cast all of our cares upon you tonight. We, we pray for all those that are sick, those that are dealing with COVID, those that are dealing with cancer, those that are recovering from surgeries, those that are awaiting tests. And Father, we pray for those that uh, are on the transplant list. We pray for Christy. We pray for Lisa tonight. We ask God that you have your hands of, of mercy and comfort upon them. I know that it's got to be an anxious time, Father, for that kind of surgery to be in your, in your future and just to, to be in, uh, waiting for that. So, God, we pray for comfort and peace. And, Lord, we just pray that you would just guide and direct everything according to those situations. Father, be with, uh, be with all of those that are facing surgeries. We pray for uh, Rose's family member there that is going to have surgery. We pray for your protection for her. God, as we pray tonight, we ask that you'd be with the church out in Oklahoma. We pray for... Uh, Brother Jamie, tomorrow night as he has an opportunity to share that work out there, and we just pray, God, that you'll move on the hearts of those uh, church, uh, those pastors and those that are with those churches out there, and we pray for added support for that work. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you would just guide and direct everything out there, just give Brother Jamie the wisdom that he needs to, uh, to help them. Uh, Father, again, just uh, thank you that we can cast all of these cares upon you. We uh, we want to remember our, our young people tonight. We pray for them. We know that they're getting ready to go back to school and off to college. And so, God, we pray for a hedge of protection about them. And, Father, tonight we pray for our lost family members, our loved ones, and uh, those in our lives that are lost and out in sin. We ask, God, that you would bring great conviction upon their hearts. Father, I, I think that most of us here tonight believe that at any moment Jesus Christ could come. We know that we're living in those last days, those perilous times. And, Father, if folks are going to get saved, they need to be getting saved uh, now. And so, God, uh, you move on their hearts and bring conviction. Send somebody their way to share the gospel. And, Father, we do pray that they might be saved. Father, have your way in this service tonight. Speak to our hearts, and we're going to thank you and praise you for all that you do. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and sing 79, hymn number 79. <clears throat>
choir sounding good tonight, amen? I tell you what, they sounded good at practice too. I'm looking forward to camp meeting and that good singing. Going to have a choir every night, amen? So uh, uh, choir members, y'all just keep coming for practice throughout the month and getting ready and looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. Uh, as far as announcements go, let's see. Uh, Oh, choir practice each Sunday night. Got visitation tomorrow night. We'll be going out door to door and going out uh, holding up the signs. So uh, if you're going to be a part of that, just let me know. I'll be sending out emails tomorrow to get everybody's uh, confirmed on that. And let's see, next Sunday is high attendance uh, for our life groups classes, a high attendance Sunday. And so make sure that you invite somebody to come with you for life groups next Sunday morning at 945. And there'll be a special time of prayer. All the classes will meet in here to start with, have a special time of prayer, and then they'll go out to their classrooms from there. So uh, ladies, y'all got a uh, calling all ladies announcements in the bulletin on Friday, September the 9th. Y'all are going out for some good fellowship and fun and food. And so I think you're supposed to let uh, Aaron know uh, about that. Uh, her number's in the bulletin, so you can text her and let her know if you're going. And uh, camp meeting's coming up, amen. Let me ask you, how many of you noticed in the bulletin this morning under that, that camp meeting section right there, that square that had the, the, the song in it? Did y'all notice that? How many of you have heard that song? What? What is it, Donna? You know it? Yeah, I figured you did. Yeah, yeah, I figured you, Donna's one of them old Pentecostal holiness people, yeah. That was, a, that was a big song, man. We used to sing it a lot, especially come revival time at the Nazarene Church. And uh, uh, I've been trying to get up my nerve to sing it for you. Huh? That's a song, what? Do you know it? Well, good, amen. Well, amen. Yeah, come on up here. Come up here, Wendy. Come up here, Donna. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Come here. Come here, Wendy. You get Y'all stand up too. He's bossy tonight, ain't he? No, I'm asking. I'm asking. You can sit down if you don't want to stand up. Where you going? They were in an upper chamber. They were all with one accord. When the Holy Ghost descended, as was promised by our Lord. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. Yes, this old time power was given to our fathers who were true. This is promised to believers and we all may have it too. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. Yeah. Ladies, amen. Amen. Huh? Donna said she, th I mean, uh, Midori said she thought it was in the choir book. So, well, amen. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, we'll sing that in every night. That's what, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, hallelujah. We need that old time power, don't we? Oh, I tell you what, that, that old time power is still there, still present. He just got to get a hold of us. Amen. So, praise the Lord. Oh, man, I was making announcements, wasn't I? There we go. Anything else need to be announced? Yes, sir, James. All right, amen. Don't forget that. Now, that's bossy, what he did say. Be there. Anything else? Let's worship the Lord when I give it. Brother Glenn. You pray for the offering. Lord Father, we have been a wonderful time for us to be together. 
Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Appreciate that. Appreciate you giving. Folks, let me just, uh, I want to say a few things about our Hope to Grow uh, program here at, uh, at church. Uh, this past week, uh, Wednesday morning, uh, Audrey had asked me if I would uh, teach the children about communion. And uh, we went down under the shelter. And, man, we just had a great time. There was 25 kids there, I guess, Audrey, something like that, 22 children down there. And we got, I got to talk to them and, and teach them about communion and what it represents and what it, what it means and how important it is and things like that. And they just, they just sat there like a sponge and just soaked that up and had a few questions afterwards and, and things like that. And then Audrey uh, took the kids, and they had a foot washing. Well, I'm going to tell you what, you see those kids, and you know, they weren't cutting up, they weren't playing, they understood what it was about, and, and washing each other's feet, and Audrey had a little squirt soap for them, and they washed each other's feet, and rinsed them off in that little pail that they had, it was awesome, and I'm just, I'm just so thankful that Audrey has a heart for those children, and man, I'm going to tell you right now, she is she is teaching them, and she's teaching them about Christ, and she's teaching them the Word of God. She's got some great helpers uh, that, that come in and, and help out and, and minister to those kids, but those children are blessed, and uh, to have somebody that cares that much about them and to be able to sow into them, I know they're taking it home to their parents. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They're taking it home to their parents, and they're sharing it with their parents, but uh, we ought to be very thankful for that program and for Miss Audrey, and, and we ought to make sure that we keep them lifted up in prayer. Amen. Audrey, you do a great job. <laughs> Miss Joy.
Thank you, Joy. Appreciate that. Eyes on the sparrow. And I go keep. We sang that song. I told you it was. We sang it a lot at the Nazarene Church. There used to be a an evangelist. Some of you may remember him, Harold Loman. He uh, he preached all over the place, everywhere uh, around. But he would uh, he would sing that song. And sometimes he'd be preaching and just kind of stop in the middle of the sermon and start singing that song. He he loved that song. But I'll never forget. He was talking about singing it one time, and he said that the piano player kept kind of running off and leaving him. And he said, I got tired of trying to chase her down. He said, I just stopped. And said, I looked at her and said, now you come back and you wait on me. <laughs> so he was something. He was a good evangelist, I'm going to tell you right now. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of James tonight. And everybody said, oh me. James chapter 2. I told you here the other night that when you, anytime you have to open up to the book of James, you know you're in trouble, Amen. James is a, uh, he doesn't hold anything back. He uh, straight and to the point. But tonight I think it'll be, uh, instead of something that'll beat us up a little bit, I think it'll be something that'll encourage us from the book of James. James chapter 2, if you're there, I ask all who can and will to stand as we honor the reading of God's word. James chapter 2, if you're there, say amen. amen. Beginning with verse 20. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise, also was Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Let's pray. Father, once again we come before the throne of grace and we confess tonight that we're needy people. We need you to work in our lives. We need to hear from you tonight. We, God, we need your touch upon our hearts and upon our lives uh, Father, we have not yet attained. There's still work to be done in each one of us. And so, Lord, just let us be surrendered here tonight. Let us be surrendered to the authority of your word. Let us be surrendered to the leading of the Holy Spirit. God, let us just uh, lay it all down here tonight let you have your way. I pray, God, that we would be encouraged to go on and fight the good fight and to run the race. Uh, Father, it's, uh, it, it, it seems to be a little tougher in these days that we're living in to let our light shine. So, God, I pray that you help us tonight to have our lamps trimmed and burning when we leave, that we might be a good witness for you. But God, you have your way. You speak to every heart, meet every need. Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I, I, I want to preach a message tonight entitled The Great Equalizer. The Great Equalizer. And before we go any farther, you can hold your fingers there in the uh, book of James. We'll, we'll be back and forth in it. But I want you to turn back over to the book of Acts chapter 10, if you will. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Boy, that sounds good. We just got to get that recorded. Amen. I believe I could go to sleep at night listening to that. That'd be better than the waves and the birds are singing and all that stuff, amen. Acts chapter 10, just one verse I want you to look at with what we just read in mind, and that is verse 34. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Aren't you thankful for that? God's not a respecter of person. He doesn't love one more than he loves the other. He doesn't uh, consider one more than he considers the other. He's not a respecter of person. Now, you go back to our text tonight, and we read about two people, uh, uh, people of faith, amen? And we know that they were people of faith, according to James, because of the works. Faith without works is dead, and he said that these two people were people of faith based on what they were doing for the Lord, and, and, man, what an odd combination that he puts together, Abraham and Rahab. I mean, that's evident right there that God's not a respecter of person when you're looking at Abraham and Rahab. I mean, just let me just talk about Abraham for just a minute. Uh, he was respected so 
greatly by the Jewish people. I mean, when Jesus was trying to minister to, to the religious Pharisees and things like that, they would always say, well, we have Abraham as our father. Amen? I mean, they, they, they reverenced him. They revered Abraham. So he was, he was a man that was looked up to. Abraham was respected. He, Abraham was a wealthy man. Genesis chapter 13 verse 2 says, And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. He had, man, he had, a, he had everything there, wealth-wise. And uh, Abraham was uh, a man that was called by God, a, a man that uh, followed God, went out not knowing where he was going. We know all of those things about Abraham. But you know what we know about Rahab? She was a harlot. I mean, just about every time you read her name in the Bible, it is followed by the harlot. Amen? I mean, as far as we know, she didn't have any great wealth. Uh, she had a sordid past. Nobody looked up to her. Nobody reverenced her. Amen? I mean, why would they? She was a harlot. Right? And yet, James puts them both together as people of faith. So faith is the great equalizer. Right. Amen? I mean, I don't care who we are, what we are, where we've been, what we've done. By faith, we're all equal. It is a great equalizer. And so that's what we'll look at uh, tonight. Uh, their faith was the great equalizer because it was not a dead faith. It was a living faith. It produced works in their life. Just because a person says they have faith does not mean that God looks at them as he does any other person. God looks at the person that has faith that produces works. Amen? Because if, if it's not faith, if it's not works by faith, then it is a dead faith. Faith. It's a devil's faith. They didn't have a devil's faith. Look in chapter 2 there at verse 19, uh, the verse right before we start. It says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devils believe that there is one God, right? But it doesn't change their life. It doesn't produce fruit for the glory of God. It is when we believe God in such a way that it changes our life and it produces works. It produces fruit. It's not us producing the fruit to show that we have faith. It is the faith that we have in God that produces the fruit out of our life. I really wasn't sure what to preach tonight and was kind of struggling with what to, to share with you. And I told Penny after the presentation of OCC this morning, I thought about maybe preaching again on the, the little missionary box, you know, and the colors of it and the red being the blood of Jesus and it being on the top and, you know, and everything. That's got to come first and the green would be the growth. And then I thought, well, I'll just open up the box and I'll start pulling out things that represent the fruit of the Spirit. Let me tell you something. That's what this faith is. It is the faith that produces the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. You know, it produces love, and therefore we go out and we witness. Therefore we go out and we serve. Therefore we get involved in ministries like Hope for Humanity and things like that. We're not working to be saved. We're working because we are saved. And because of the love of the Spirit in our, in our life, we want to help others and minister to others and share the gospel. Amen? And so that's what kind of faith that we're talking about that is the great equalizer. That kind of faith makes us all even in the sight of God, all equal in the sight of God by faith, right? So uh, let's take a quick look through Hebrews chapter 11 tonight. Go, go back up just a little bit there from James, if you're back over in James, and look in Hebrews chapter 11 just at how faith is the great equalizer. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. And we've been learning a lot about Noah in, in our life group classes, Amen. But it says here in verse 7 about Noah, it says, By faith Noah, being warned of good God of things not yet as seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. One thing about this great equalizer, this faith that is the great equalizer, it, it makes us righteous with God. Hallelujah. That righteousness which is by faith. That is the righteousness that is pleasing to God, amen? And that's the only righteousness that is pleasing to God. The Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please him. So it is this faith that is the great equalizer. We got Noah here. He, he worked on a ship for 120 years. And the Bible says that during that time he was a preacher of righteousness. 
He preached while he worked on that, that ark. Amen? To the saving of his house. Now you think about that. It says, by faith he done this. Now jump down to verse 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. So just like we had Abraham and Rahab, now we've got Noah the great shipbuilder and Sarah the old woman. <laughs> yeah, I said old woman, more seasoned woman. <laughs> Amen. But in the eyes of God, there's no respect of person there because they are both Walking by faith. They are both serving by faith. They are both trusting God by faith. It doesn't matter that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. God didn't respect him more than Sarah who was an old woman past childbearing age. By faith they were equal in the eyes of God. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 24. Hebrews 11 and 24. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he, he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Folks, Moses here, we're talking about Moses. Moses, the great deliverer. I mean, you just read what we just read right here. It is amazing what he did by faith. Amen? You think about where Moses was at. I mean, he was, he was put in that little bulrush ark, and he was found by Pharaoh's daughter, and he was raised up in his palace, and he had gone to, man, <clears throat> he had had the finest schools, the finest teachers, I mean, he had, he had wealth, he had fine clothes, he had fine food. He, as the old rich man in the uh, New Testament, he fared sumptuously every day. Amen? And he was willing to forsake all of that to suffer with the children of God. How did he do that? It was by faith. He was a great man. But look in verse 32. And what shall I more say, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon? So here we got Moses, the great deliverer, and then he throws in Gideon. Y'all know anything about Gideon? The Bible says he was the least of his family. Now, a lot of people think he was a little fella and things like that, but, but the thing about it, he was the least of his family, and God called him. God called him to deliver his people, amen, to go to war and protect his people. Y'all remember Gideon? You got the wrong one. Amen. I'm the least in my family. Why would you choose me? And then when Gideon put out the, the sheepskin, he said, God, if, it, if, if I don't have my wires crossed, then you let the dew fall on the ground, but let the sheepskin be dry. So God did exactly what he asked. And he said, well, I'm still not sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not much to be looked at as far as somebody going to war and protecting the children of Israel. So I tell you what, God, let's do this again. I'll put the sheepskin out, and this time, let the sheepskin be wet with dew and let the whole ground be dry. Well, guess what God did? He did exactly that. Amen. And so you got Moses, the great deliverer that goes down and delivers the children of Israel, forsakes all the palace and the, and the, and the food and all the things that he had, goes and suffers with the children of Israel, and then God uses him to deliver them Great deliver, pass through the Red Sea. Can you imagine? Brother Mike Brooks showed a picture up here the other Sunday morning in life groups class, and he said, this is what a partial flood would look like. Now, y'all do believe in a worldwide flood, right? He said, this is what a partial flood would look like, and it showed this water, and it just stopped right there. And every, you know, it, it, that, that does not happen except for the Red Sea. God parted the Red Sea, held the waters back, and they walked through on dry land. This is, how did all this happen? According to what we just read, it was by faith. Amen? And then you got Gideon, and he's struggling the whole time, but, but it's by faith. They're, he's equal. God's not a respecter of Moses any more than he is of Gideon. Look at that same passage right there, or same verse there where Gideon is in verse 32. You got Gideon, and then you got Barak. Barak. Y'all know about Barak? <laughs> God called him to be a judge, and he said, I ain't going. Lest Deborah goes with me. What? 
and he's listed in here as the, in the hall of faith. I'm not going unless Deborah goes with me. Amen? I'm not going out holding signs tomorrow night unless Penny goes with me. That's a great man of faith, isn't it? But evidently he had faith because he's here. God's not, not putting him down. He's not making less of him. He's there with Moses and Gideon, got Barak, and then you got Samson. We know about Samson, don't we? Whew, Samson. Samson struggled with them strange women, didn't he? Amen. He couldn't, they couldn't find a Jewish woman that he took a liking to. He wanted to go down there and get them Philistine women, right? And yet God's got him in here. He's got him in here. And then, and then you got Jephthah. And boy, I'm going to tell you something right now. You read about him in Judges chapter 11. The Bible starts out describing him. He was the son of a harlot. That's how he starts out getting described. And I'm going to tell you something. They kicked him out of town. He was a wild man. They kicked him out of town. And then when they got in trouble, the town wanted him back to, to, to lead the army. And he made a rash vow to God. And he said, God, if you'll go with me and give me the victory, I'll give you the first thing that greets me from my house when I return from battle. Guess what was the first thing that, that greeted him? It was his daughter. Just a rash bow. And yet he's here. And, you know, I was studying that thing out, and, and I was looking at it, and I want to share with you what uh, Barnes' commentary has in it. It says, the apostle does not commend all which they did. He does not deny that they were very imperfect men, nor that they did many things which cannot be approved or vindicated. He commends only one thing, their faith. Now, I'm looking out over a congregation, and, man, we got all kind of people in here. We got the more seasoned women. We got the younger women. We got the children in here. We got men. We got firemen. We got, I mean, we've got, I mean, we got all kind of people in here. And I'm going to tell you something. Some of our walks with God are closer than others are. Amen. I mean, some of us are walking by faith, and some of us are struggling like Gideon. Some of us have a very sordid past like Rahab. But aren't you just so thankful for the gift of faith that is the great equalizer Oh, God doesn't look down on this congregation and says, you know what, Midori's a piano player. I have more respect for her than, than for the preacher that can't play a lick of nothing. He doesn't do that. You see, she is walking by faith. I'm walking by faith. And in the eyes of God, we are equal. There is no respect of person. And it's all because of the gift that God gives us of faith. Go over to Romans chapter 12. We, you know this verse, but I want us to look at it anyway. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, look at verse 3, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, and I also want to say this, and I'm not trying to add to the word of God, we're not supposed to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, but we're not supposed to think more lowly of ourselves than we ought to think. Sometimes we read over there in Hebrews chapter 11 all those people of faith and all the things that were accomplished in their life and we hold them up as something special. But God gives to every man the measure of faith. That's what we'll read right here. He says, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith that will produce the works in our life. Amen. The measure of faith that puts us right there on the same plane as Moses and Abraham and Sarah and even Rahab and Gideon and Jephthah. Amen? It is the great equalizer. This gift of faith that God has given to us. Go over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. You there? Ephesians chapter 2. Again, scriptures that you should be familiar with, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen? 
Now, don't be getting confused on this thing. You say, well, here it says that salvation is not of works. It's not of works. It's by faith that produces works because verse 10 says we are created in, God, in Christ Jesus under good works. Amen? And so here, listen, God has given every one of us a measure of faith. There's not, a one, there's not a single person in here, there's not a single person on the face of the earth right now that cannot be saved. You know why? Because God has given them faith. Faith to believe. Faith to be born again. Faith to be saved. Amen. And so it's the great equal, all of us. That's why the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. It's, it's not the good people. It's not the bad people. It's people that take the faith that God has given to them and they place it in Jesus Christ. Therefore, man, that's no respecter of person. We're all equal in Christ. Amen, by faith. Look in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. You there? Now this is a verse that blows our minds sometimes, but look at verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, Jesus says, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Isn't that amazing? We draw back from that in a hurry. Well, that can't mean what it says. I know who I am. That can't mean what it says. We're starting to sound like Gideon. Amen? We're starting to sound like those that, uh, Moses when God first called him. I can't do that. But we can by faith. It is the same faith that say, hey, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you can believe that God will save you, <laughs> he can do anything. He can do anything through us. It says here, he says, the, the works that I do you shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Jesus knew that God had given to every man a measure of faith. And he knew that it was by that faith that he could be saved, and it was by that faith that he could do greater works than even Christ. Amen. Now look, you say, well, man, I, I don't, there's no way that I could do greater works than Christ. I can tell you right now, when we get together as the body of Christ, man, we, how many people, how many people can you and I reach today with the gospel? How many people did Jesus reach? They say that he never traveled more than 200 miles from his birthplace. How many people did he reach? 10,000, 20,000, 50,000? Go on the computer. Send the gospel out. How many people can you reach with the gospel like that? You reach millions. Amen. Jesus Christ said, boy, if you just have the faith, if you just have the faith, the, you, if you'll just exercise that faith, if you'll place that faith in me, it's the great equalizer. Every one of us. Every one of us can do great things for God because of the faith that he has given to us. Amen? Go, go back over to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. Look at verses, uh, look at verses 38 and 39. I tell you what, let's back up. Let's back up. Let's back up. Look at, uh, let's just start at verse 32. How's that? We just read, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. We know about Gideon. We know about Barak. Uh, Barak. We know of Samson, of Jephthah, David. Isn't it amazing that you got Jephthah and Barak and, and Gideon, these people that just, man, they just questioned everything. They, they wouldn't walk by faith. They wanted Deborah to go with them. They uh, had problems with strange women and all of that kind of stuff. And then you've got David, the king, a man after God's own heart. And then you have the great prophet Samuel. All in one of the same verse. Faith is the great equalizer, Brother Glenn. Amen? And then let's go on to read. It says, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. How did they do all of that? 
Faith, by faith. Go on now. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. They more over, yea, more over bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sown asunder. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Of whom, listen now. Of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Why? Look at the last verse. God having provided something better for uh, some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. You know what he just did? He lumped every one of us that are walking by faith in that same group right there. And he says, you're all together, you're all equal by the gift of faith. It's a great equalizer. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? <laughs> This great cloud of witnesses, these great men and women of faith, we're included with them. We're included with them. They didn't receive uh, the promise because God says, I've got somebody else to bring along beside of you. By faith, we're going to receive the promise. Isn't that wonderful? By faith, we're going we're to be with them one day. All oh, the stories we'll tell. The things we'll have to talk about. Amen? Why would God give such a wonderful gift of faith? Well, one reason is because his, it's not his will that any perish, but that all come to repentance. God gives every man a measure of faith so that we can be saved. But he also gives us that same measure of faith so that when we are saved, we can glorify him by our walk of faith. Amen? Amen? He also gives us that gift so that we can encourage one another with our faith. I got two more places I want us to go. Go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Paul writing this letter, look at verse 8. He's writing to the Christians here in, in Rome and other parts that are being persecuted. And he says, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. It says here that their faith was spoken of throughout the world. God getting glory there. Amen. God's getting glory. And then Paul says, I never pray without mentioning you. Paul was encouraged by their faith. I told you the other night that we are to love one another, provoke one another unto love and good works. And that I believe that one of the reasons we have so many people involved in ministry around here is because we provoke each other into ministry. I mean, when you have 35 people going out on visitation, it provokes others to be involved in it. Amen? We haven't always had 35. Oh, we had 10, and then we had 20, and then we had... 25, and now we're having 35. You know why people are provoked in that way? Well, let me tell you something. It works the same way by walking by faith. As you walk by faith, it encourages me. And I hope by me walking by faith, it encourages you. It strengthens you. Amen? So God gives us this wonderful gift of faith so that we can be saved. He gives us this wonderful gift of faith so that we can glorify him and so that we can encourage each other to walk by faith. I got one more place. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, talking about this being the great equalizer. Matthew chapter 1, you there? The genealogy of Jesus Christ. These are the parts of the Bible we hum through when we're reading it. And you get to something that you can understand. You know, you don't have to pronounce all them hard names, right? But I want you to look at verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David. There's old Abraham, the son of Abraham. Isn't that something? Man, he was such a, a man of faith that he is listed in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Would you jump down to verse 5? And Salmon begat Boaz, or Boaz, of Rechab. You know who Rechab is? This is one of the few times that it's listed and it doesn't say the harlot. Here she is. 
Isn't that amazing, Brother Glenn, that you've got Abraham, this great man of faith, and then you have Rahab, the harlot, in the lineage of Jesus Christ? It is amazing what God can do through faith. So let me ask you something. What does God want to do through you with that gift of faith? Don't say that you can't do it because God's done lumped you together with all those over there in Hebrews chapter 11, and you look at what they were able to accomplish by faith, what does God want to do through you by faith? Amen? How does God want to be glorified in your life through faith? How does he want you to encourage others to walk by faith? Think about that. Amen? The great equalizer. We're right there with Abraham and Sarah and Moses and Noah, Matt Pugh. <laughs> How about that? David Dobbins, Linda Troxel, Glenn Brooks. We're right there by faith. God wants to do great things through our life. Amen. Y'all stand with me tonight, heads bowed, eyes closed. Midori, if you'll come. What does God want to do in your life? He's given you that measure of faith for a purpose. First and foremost, that you were, you're saved. That's why he gives you that measure of faith, so that you might be saved, that you might be born again. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, let me ask you something. What have you done with that gift of faith that God has given to you? Have you put, put that faith in your own self, in your own strength, in your own ability? Have you put that faith in your job or in money or in your investments? Is that where your faith rests? God gave you that faith so that you could exercise it in Jesus Christ, so that you could put your faith in Jesus. You could believe in him with all your heart and be born again into the family of God. God gave you that faith so you don't have to die and go to hell. He gave you that faith so you could be born into his family and have a home in heaven. So let me ask you tonight, where, where's your faith rest? Has there ever been a time when you put it in Jesus Christ? If not, would you do that tonight? By faith, will you be born again? By faith, will you trust Christ as your Savior? Now, friend, if, that, if God's dealing with your heart in that way, I can't see that. So I'm going to ask you, if God is dealing with your heart tonight, that you need to be saved. And you're ready to make that decision for Christ. Would you just slip your hand up right where you stand? I'm not, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm, not, I'm just going right where you stand. Would you just raise your hand? Preacher, I'm ready to be saved tonight. I believe God wants to save my soul. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to put my faith in him. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up? Anyone? Well, let me ask you something tonight. What's God doing in your life? What does he want to do in your life through the faith that he has given to you? What great steps of faith does he want you to take? Don't say that you can't because you can. Let God search your heart tonight. The altar's open if you'd like to come and pray. What's God want to do in your life, through your life? Father, as we come to the close of another Lord's Day, as we come to the close of another Sunday and time of worship, we are thankful tonight for all that you give to us. And we are thankful for that gift of faith that you have dealt to every man. God, we're so thankful tonight that by faith we can be saved, we can be born again. By faith, we can live a life that is pleasing to you. By faith, God, there can be great things accomplished in and through our lives. We can be a part of building your kingdom. We can be a part of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of God under salvation. We, we can be a part of somebody coming to know Jesus as their Savior. God, there's no greater work than your work, the work of the kingdom. And we're thankful that you have given us exactly what we need so that you can be glorified, so that we can encourage others, so that we can help others. So, Lord, let us, help, uh, let, us, let us think about those things. Let us meditate on those things, this gift that you have given us. And let us exercise this faith that you might be glorified, that your kingdom might be built up. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you for it. Well, God, we're going to thank you and praise you for it throughout eternity. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Be with us as we leave from this place. Help us to be a good witness for you. We'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you.